2045. The next time there will be a total solar eclipse in the lower 48, I sure wasn't going to miss totality on April 8th, 2024. It was sometime around Christmas when the hype for the April 8th eclipse started to build. I had Delta Hilton and National Rental Points ready to burn and booked an expense-free trip to Dallas, Texas, arriving Sunday, April 7th and departing on Tuesday, April 9th. If everything broke correctly, I would take in totality under Texas clear skies, have a storm chase on Sunday or Monday evening, and be on the first flight home out of DFW Tuesday morning. As the calendar flipped to April, the forecast was far from promising for Texas clear skies. Two days before departure, I scrapped everything Texas, loaded up the Tahoe, and headed for Southwest Illinois. This is my eclipse story beginning with planning and backyard practice in February and March, to a road trip that includes shooting Comet Ponds Brook, an epic sunset storm chase on Eclipse Day Eve, and of course, my experience with totality. Looks like this is going to be home for the next couple days. Start making some room in here. There's part of the room. The front seats, or the middle seats can still go down as well to get me more room for sleeping, so I'm going to play with that real quick. So this is my space. Definitely sleepable. It's not great, but I've got a camping pad and two sleeping bags with I can put down uh, for a com little more comfort. I actually have some plywood I could set over the top of this too. big area in here now. This isn't the cleanest thing in the world. All right, so I got my camping mat here, which will roll out this way. I've got an extra sleeping bag that I'll put on top of it. And then I got my sleeping bag that I'll use to sleep in. So I think that will be doable for a sleeping situation if I choose not to or can't get a hotel somewhere. Alright, I think that does it. We are packed up, ready to go, all the camera gear and enough stuff for a couple days. I did get a hotel reservation in Rockford, Illinois tonight, about four and a half hours away. So that is where I'm off to. I'm going to leave here in about 10 minutes, stop at the gas station, get to Rockford hopefully before midnight, get a good night's sleep, maybe see some storms in Illinois tomorrow, maybe not. And to see where the day takes me, I'll still have five hours to kind of get to my target area where I want to go. Right now I have Friendville, Illinois, kind of selected on the path of totality for the full four minutes. That's my goal right now. We'll have to see the cloud maps play out, how storms play out, and where I end up. But Rockford, Illinois, here I come. And just like that, we are off. Leaving the Twin Cities here at 7.15, heading for Rockford, Illinois, about four and a half hours away. All right, Twin Cities right on the border of Minnesota and Wisconsin, so we are crossing into our first state. We'll see how many states we hit on this trip. It might just be three if it's just Minnesota, Wisconsin, and Illinois. But I could find myself in Indiana. I could find myself in Missouri. I don't think Arkansas is in play. It could definitely be mobile. Welcome to Wisconsin. There we go. Welcome to Wisconsin. Got a nice belt of Venus going on here, driving off into the east. Nice sunset behind us. 
in an hour driving in the daylight here and we'll have three hours in the dark. It's about nine o'clock and I had to take a little pit stop. So into the moon, new moon now and Comet Pons Brook is still in our western sky. And as I was driving east, I get further and further away from the Twin Cities. At home, I have no chance to shoot this comet from my neighborhood or my house because we're shooting right over St. Paul of Minneapolis. So we are out past Eau Claire where 94 starts turning a little bit south. I'm in some pretty dark skies, so I've got my big lens out, my 200 to 500 out. I've got it dialed in at 200 right now, and I'm taking exposures of the comet. Um, I'm about an hour and a half into the drive. I still got three hours to go, so it's just a quick stop, shoot the comet real quick, stretch my legs, and then I need to get back on the freeway, which you can probably hear. It's right behind me, actually. I pulled off looped around. I'm kind of out in the middle of nowhere here in Wisconsin. I'm gonna get a few more shots. It's hard to find the comet. It's not naked eye visible. I've shot mine at 200. I'll stack those in sequitur. Uh, I'm gonna try to dial it, dial it in at 500. I got it tucked behind the car. It's super windy out. You can probably hear it, see my jacket blowing. I'm freezing. You know, dial it up to 500, try to get a couple more shots and pack everything back up, get back on 94 behind us and keep on moving. If any of these shots came out, here they are, right now. Okay, this shot's not going to win any awards, but I'll take it for an impromptu shot of a once-in-a-lifetime comet that won't be back until 2095. This is a stack of 12 shots at 500mm, f5.6, six second exposures at ISO 1000. I'm happy I was able to pull out a little detail in that long tail. I also managed to capture the zodiacal light, which is a faint triangle shaped glow of diffused light scattered by interplanetary dust. That's a mouthful. In this image, the zodiacal light is battling some light pollution, but it's there. It's the streak of light going through the Pleiades star cluster near the center of the image. Also in this shot is Orion, Pleiades, Jupiter, and Comet Pons Brook. All right, so that's day one. Made it to the hotel room here, Hilton Garden Inn. Brought all my gear in. Don't need a break in out in the parking lot. So yeah, it is uh, 1.16 in the morning. I'm gonna set up a little charging station, get some camera batteries that I've been using today charged back up. Get my mic charged back up. And hit the sack and see what tomorrow brings. We're gonna look at uh, weather models here, see how the clouds are looking. There's some storms rolling across Missouri right now, heading this way. See what time they're gonna roll into Illinois here, Wisconsin, and keep moving south and get into that line of totality tomorrow. So we're there for Monday. Here's to a good night's sleep because I have no clue where I'm sleeping tomorrow. on Eclipse Day Eve, the day before the eclipse, 
It is Saturday, April 7th. Good morning. It is raining. Rockford, Illinois. Raining and cold. 45 degrees. Doesn't feel very eclipsy and it doesn't feel very stormy. But I am heading about five hours south to get into the line of totality today. And so in, it so coincides with a slight risk and a 5% tornado risk right in the exact same spot. So I sweat it out not going to Texas because of storms, but I might still be able to get a storm chase here the day before the eclipse and be in perfect position for tomorrow already. So things looking up pretty things looking up pretty good right now. And I am going to find a cup of coffee somewhere, get back on the highway, and start moving south. driving update we are about two and a half hours from our eclipse and storm chasing target so making good time today i've been driving through little pop-up clusters of storms and showers almost the whole trip which has been pretty annoying we've had some pretty hard rain slows down traffic um, i do have a line of storms off to my west that's going to cross the road i'm on right now there's nothing severe or anything in there. I'm debating if I want to stop and stop a time lapse or just get to my spot. We made it, Carbondale, Illinois. Uh, not too far from Missouri that way. Um, drove about five hours down from Rockford, Illinois today. Basically drove through rain and scattered thunderstorms the whole way down here. You can see an off going storm that way. We are under a uh, mesoscale discussion for this area. We're kind of in the northern third of it. Uh, so there is some chance of additional severe weather this afternoon, which I'm hoping we see without destruction, obviously. Uh, large hail and tornadoes will probably be the, the risk there. Uh, we got sunny skies. It's about 70 degrees right now. So I don't know. I haven't really read up on anything right now. Hopefully this outgoing weather isn't kind of the risk. Now that we got some daylight heating here, it's only about 4 o'clock. Uh, hopefully this is going to stir up, increase the instability, and we have a front coming through, I believe, from the northwest, a cold front with some different sheared winds. Uh, hopefully that's the initiator to get some storms firing here. Uh, it feels good to be in a stormy spot. There goes some weather. These storms are moving pretty fast, too. They're probably moving 30 miles an hour uh, off to the northeast. So if something does go up, it's going to go quick. I'm going to keep my eye on this area over to my side here and I'll flip the camera around and show that to you. And yeah, yeah, now I got nothing but time on my side. Feels good to be here early. So additional storms did finally pop, but unfortunately they were 60 miles north of me and 60 miles south of me. Uh, the tornado warn storm you can see here was actually north of the mesoscale discussion. So I wasn't in a hurry to rush up there an hour away if more storms are going to pop closer to where I was. Unfortunately, nothing looked promising where I was, so I made the decision to drive up and try to catch maybe a tail end Charlie on that line of storms. And that's exactly what I did and ran into a great supercell. Probably a nice hail core right in front of us there. When we get up around these trees, I think it, wide, it opens up and we can get a good picture. I'll grab the other cameras quick.
All right, first storm chase in the books. It was a lot of driving. I have no idea where I am in Illinois. I have no idea where I am compared to totality, but we got a great storm. It's kind of blowing up right over the top of us here, which is pretty awesome. We got decent lightning up in the anvil here. Just had a good one there. So, hey, I'll take it. I came down here to chase an eclipse. Was bummed out I wasn't going to Texas because they're gonna have big storms down there tomorrow. But here we go. I chased the storm all day. I got some cool looks at it. And this kind of tail end, Charlie blew up uh, after the main severe storm went by. So here we are. We got our frozen storm. It's warm. It's spring. I can't ask for anything more than this. I'll blow through and clear out tonight. Uh, so we're gonna have sunny skies, it sounds like, for the eclipse tomorrow. Man, you can't ask for a, a better a better way to spend a day right now. The only downside is I'm homeless. I got nowhere to sleep. No, I just thought we could keep the truck right here and crawl in the back and sleep right here, but I gotta figure out where I am, where I am compared to totality, and probably get in better position. So I'm gonna let this run for a little bit more. It's probably gonna actually come over me, so I'm gonna clean up here in a little bit. And then Look for a place to stay. So this might be signing off for the day before the eclipse, eclipse day eve, whatever you want to call it. We got a beautiful thunderstorm right here, non-severe. I haven't looked in a while, but I assume it's still non-severe. Yeah, what what a day, what a storm. If I dip south. Get on the tail end of this thing. So I might do that because jog about five miles south and I can the storm. But it just kind of drift past me. So I gotta clean up everything and make a move. <laughs>